Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And I want to share with you another spinning wheel card. I did another one of these recently. And this one is going to be formulated a little bit differently. But I'm going to use a smoothie for the main image. And that's from Lawn Fawn. But I'm going to start with the construction of this. In order to place my blender in the spot they want it exactly. I've got a circle that I've die cut and the circle is big enough to contain the entire image and you can see here that the whole top part of the blender which is going to be the opening fits right in there with the button right in the center of the circle and I can move this up and down and sort of just figure out where I want the blender to be placed high or low on the card and then put a little mark there so that I can stamp my blender exactly in that right spot. And so I've done that using my Misty. I stamped a couple of these using the Misty and my patrons get to see how I did the actual stamping of that and making of that scene. Just did some fun masking techniques to make that happen. You can join in and be a patron over on my Patreon page. This piece is the one of the extras. This is the template portion that I'm gonna use. And so it's not the finished one. But the flat circle here is going to be the finished one, and I'm taking my template, which is the one with the creases, lining it up so I can put a, a little hole right in the center of that circle and not have to fold it in order to get there. This one being the template portion, I'm going to poke a hole in the button, and then I'm going to stick a brad in there so that I can start testing this and figure out how it works. The back portion on the back side, I've I've placed it all together and then marked it so that I can figure out where a hole would be cut into this because the circle is going to be inside this time instead of outside. If you saw the previous one, the circle stuck out and you could turn it. So this one I'm going to do a different type of construction. So I'll reassemble it with the template one on the front and the real one on the back and then test it to make sure it spins and it spins just fine. Next, I want to figure out how to quarter it. So I need four of the blenders on the other side. So I'm just going to start with some quick pencil lines, not measuring anything, just throwing it in there, and then start tracing pencil lines inside each one of those, those little blenders, moving it a quarter turn, tracing another blender, move it another quarter turn, and so on until you have four on the piece of paper, because that's what we're going to end up doing our finished stamping on. And here you can see I'm going to start stamping with just different fruits. I'm going to pick one that's going to be banana smoothie, another's going to be a strawberry smoothie, and so on throughout the piece. You know, I'll have one that's just blueberries and then there'll be one that's mixed. With each one of these, you could make it go all the way to the top edge, or you could make it like I'm going to do, which is it's going to be a little bit down from the top edge so that it looks like there's some extra space in the blender. And there's a few mistakes I've made in here that I'll show you my repair for later because I went a little too far out to the edge of this and that resulted in me doing something that I actually liked much more on the card than if I had done it properly in the first place. So now I have filled in with a bunch of the blueberries so that I could kind of make all of this as it spins. There's going to be color the whole way around even though there's four distinct spots for them to stop on to dial in the, the flavor of choice. I'll speed her up here a little bit more and I'm just gonna throw color in the background. I only used one color on those blueberries, didn't get fancy with them. Same thing with my strawberries, I'm not gonna get crazy. They're only gonna see that little blender portion through the little window, so it doesn't really matter if they're heavily detailed or that sort of thing. And each of these sections, they're going to have a little bit of fluid color from the smoothie portion in them and then some bubbly portions at the top. But I'm just blend, doing some soft blending in between the two colors so that they don't look really harsh as it spins around. The strawberries get little lines drawn on them with a white pen. And this is one of the weird parts about this is that the strawberries you wouldn't put in with the greens, but we're just gonna pretend that you do. And maybe there are people that eat the greens, I don't really know. Not me. So I'll finish up the banana smoothie and then this one is the multi-fruit smoothie with mixed fruits. And then I can go ahead and color the front portion. And I chose to color it before trimming out the hole. And you may decide you want to trim it beforehand so that in case you mess it up then you have an extra. 
But again, if you do it with the Misty and you make several of these at once, then you have another one if you mess this one up and you can still come out with a good card by the time you're done. And I'm just going to throw some colors on here. I'm doing a very slight amount of blending on here, but I didn't look to get really fancy with it simply because the interactive portion of this card is going to be so much fun that it doesn't matter a whole lot if the blending is exotic. And that is what I try on a lot of my cards is to figure out which portion I'm focusing on. Which one is my eye really drawn to? What do I want my viewers to be drawn to? And whatever that is, I put my time and effort into that and not necessarily as much into everything else because most people aren't going to look as deeply as to look and see is the is there blending on the yogurt cup? Is there blending on every single piece? Is every ice cube in that tray? Is there some kind of color in there? Don't stress over it too much. Just put in some simple blending. And I know there are going to be some people who will tell me that that handle should be glass, but I wanted more of the teal color throughout this. So there you go. It's fantasy to even have a blender like this on a card. So we can color things any way we want. Next up, I'll just smooth out some of the blending in the, the little middle metal portion of this. And you could also make the gray portion of that blender a color instead and make the buttons brightly colored, but I chose to do it this way. And then I'm gonna throw some color as a shadow underneath. You could really skip this step because for a lot of people, blending of shadows can be really challenging. And it was challenging for me. I went over it a whole bunch of times to try to get the color to blend out. And I was sitting at a weird angle the day that I was coloring this, so it threw my whole groove off. So if you find that you color best when you're sitting in a particular position at a certain table, any, anything like that. Here I was trying to add some of the medium tone to try to smooth out some of those areas and increase the depth of the shadows, the, the length of them, how far it goes out. And eventually I gave up. <laughs> That's just how it goes. So now I've cut out the inside portion and using one of my dark markers to make sure that that white doesn't show from the core of the paper. And now I'm taking the template one and marking where I want to have that hole cut. So same hole in the same spot and then I'll put the two finished pieces together with the brat. And then I figured out the error of my ways which was when I started spinning this around on the right hand side you can see little berries randomly popping out. Uh, that was an oops because I didn't mark that circle so that I would stay away from that area. But I found a fix for it so I didn't have to redo the card which was to trim the card down horizontally so it's not as wide. I'm just doing that with my fingertip knife and then I glued a strip of black cardstock under there. I just have the adhesive on the back of the colored piece and then trimmed it down so I only have just a little strip on the edge and I punched a smaller hole. So now I have this lovely black really striking edge to the card and it also emphasizes the fact that there's a little thing for the user the recipient to turn because otherwise they might miss it if it's white on white. So that actually worked out in my favor. I was pretty excited about that. To adhere it together, I've got some Be Creative tape underneath, staying very clear away from that circle so I don't end up gumming that up. And then I lined particularly the black edge up so that I don't end up having to do any careful trimming. And I could trim the left or the bottom if I needed to to tidy it up. And then I stamped the sentiment on top actually stamped two colors. I stamped a teal and a pink on top of each other to make that purple, which was kind of fun. And here you can see the finished selections spinning around. Oh my gosh, this was so much fun to make and I hope you might try it. It's not so hard as long as you get the lining up of things quite right. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, hit the like button down below. You can watch some other videos, including the other spinner card that I told you about and some other lawn fawn. You can subscribe if you'd like to do that. You haven't already because I put out about three videos a week that I would love to share with you. If you'd like to become a patron, there's a link in the description down below to go to my Patreon page. The patrons get bonus videos each month and they're getting a bonus video showing how I did that masking on this card. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a wonderful day.